Hello everyone, my name is Barrick and I am one of the founders of the Redstone Development Foundation. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of my famous 45 degree slanted condensed redstone torch displays. But first, I would like to go over some of the mods I'm going to be using, just to help clarify things. First is Zombies Fly Mod, which lets me zoom around at incredible speeds. And of course the other one is World Edit which is a bucket mod that lets you copy and paste and rotate and do all kinds of fancy stuff with uh, blocks. Without it, none of these gigantic stone creations would even be possible. No one would spend the time to place everything block by block. At least I wouldn't. So, first off, I would like to welcome you to the brand new Redstone uh, Development Foundation server. It is version 1.0 and we've got a brand new map going. Uh, the map is very flat, as you can see, and is broken up into 256 block by 256 block plots. And each one of our members has their own plot that they are welcome to modify and build whatever they want within their plot. Now to answer one of the first questions that I know is gonna be coming up, what are these little things that are all over each plot? And those are chunk border markers. They represent the four corners of the chunks so that you can tell where the chunks are. Now, since it has been rumored that the uh, edge torch disappearing chunk glitch thing has been fixed, hopefully, uh, these aren't really as critical as they used to be, but they're still pretty helpful for planning purposes. Now for our project that we're going to be going over today, we don't really need them because uh, I'm just going to be showing you a simple, well, let's go with a 5x5 five five display. Now these things are really easy to build when you have a tool like World Edit. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so first off, build the blocks, two blocks high, and stick a redstone torch on top. Then we run blocks out quite a ways this way. Why so far? You'll see in a minute. Now the important part about uh, having it so far out is that it will save you work later on. Uh, you can make it shorter. Uh, this is entirely dependent on how tall you want your uh, display to be. Uh, the taller it is, the longer you're going to want this to be. And again, that will become clear in a little bit. So once we have a nice little L-shaped long block thing going here. What we're going to do is place another block here and stick a torch on the side of that. Then we're going to take and place another block here and run the same thing all the way down. And again, putting redstone torch on top. Now you're going to see here that the redstone is uh, intermingling with the other redstone, which makes for a problem, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another layer of blocks on top here. And what that's going to do, obviously, is break the connection to keep the inputs separated, like so, so that the inputs are stacked. All right, so now we've created the very first part of um, our display. It's easy enough. This is a, uh, a primary component. The next part is pretty simple. Uh, what we do is we use our wand tool for our world edit, and we select that block right there, which we'll come back in a second, and the other one here. So we select this gigantic mass, and then we're going to go ahead and break this block. And the reason why is it just makes it look cleaner. You don't have to, but it's kind of an aesthetic thing. I like it. Okay, so now once you've done that, what you're gonna wanna do is stand on this block and hover right above this one. Oops, excuse me, that's for a later point. First, we're actually gonna stand right here and do slash slash copy, which copies all the blocks. Then we're gonna stand on top of everything. Stand on this block, hover over this block, and then type slash slash paste. Okay, now what that does 
is paste exactly what we made below above. And as you can see, it doesn't interfere with what was going on down below. We got a double layer block here, which is fine. It's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, and everything looks good. Now, here's the critical component, and that is this depth aspect. As you can see, because we're sinking back in by one every time that we paste, we're going to quickly overlap this if we build up too high. And it's not a real big issue. It just means that you'd have a lot more work of adding additional lines down below, uh, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So it's a lot better to have this nice and long so that you can cut it off later on when you're all said and done. All right, so now we've got two. So let's add a third one by doing our little hover thing and hitting paste. A fourth one by doing the same thing. And a fifth one, which we will do by the same method. Okay, so now we have five layers of torches, which is five layers of, um, uh, of the display, vertically anyway. So now what we have to do is we have to fill in this extra bit to make all of the torches line up in a nice 45 degree condensed um, form. So the way that we do that is we add a couple blocks on top of these with a couple torches on top. And we do the same. And again. And, oops, whoops. And the same. And again. Okay. So we're going to be keep keeping doing that all the way up until we have a nice slant. So I started from the bottom to kind of give you an idea of what this is going to look like. But it's a, it's a better idea to start at the top so that you know just how high to go with the bottom one because it's not exactly clear. So what we do is start at the top and then add our torches onto the side. So this is the very top of our display right there. Now I'm going to add a couple more torches on top, or blocks on top of the torches. And there's row two. So once we have our torches placed all the way up to, and blocks placed all the way up to the top, you'll see that we have a very nice 45 degree condensed display. Now, interesting note here that every other one of these is default set to on instead of off like it should be. What that means is that every, every other one of these, we have to have the signal that's going into it be inverted. So the way that we do that is you can pick an arbitrary point somewhere uh, generally you like to keep it even, at least I do, for again aesthetics, and put an inverter here. Okay, and what that is going to do is it's going to default that to off. So you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now if you'll notice, because the, of where the inverter is on this side, it is also powering this, which is a problem. So what you have to do is make sure that your inverters on that line line up. That way you eliminate that problem entirely. So once you have your lined up inverters, you'll see that both of those torches that were on are now off as they should be since we have no input signals going in. And so you're going to want to do the same thing for the next layer. And the best way to trace which layer needs to be done is to go to the block that is the tor lit torches are connected to and go down until you see the redstone feeding into it. And that's the one that you have to change. So we're going to match it up with the one that we have below, just like so. And again, on the other side. So, and then we have a nice 5x2 display that is 
all off. Now, at this point, you can uh, probably stick a few blocks here uh, to close this in. And yes, I know that I could use world edit and be done with this in like, one command, but just to help con uh, make it less confusing, I'm going to do it by hand. And there we go. We have a lovely 5x2 display. And if we were to stick a torch on, oh, I don't know, let's say this one, to represent a signal getting put into it, you'll notice that torch is on. All right. So now comes uh, the shaving procedure. And what we want to do here is select the uh, bottom, or excuse me, the top corner here. Actually, let's uh, select this redstone. And the reason why is because it's easier to select its um, uh, respective other corner block on this side. So you select those two, which selects this massive block of extra busing. And we go set air. Bam. All done. And now we have a very nice shaved off uh, display. And as you can see, there's a couple of extra blocks here. Uh, you can condense this in a little bit more uh, with depending on how your inputs are set up. Um, but for our purposes, this work looks great. So what we're going to do now that it is a 5x2 is we're going to expand it to be a 5x5. And that is just a matter of copy-paste, because these are tileable. So what we have to do is first give ourselves a reference block. So we select that one, and it's going to pop back up in a second. I'll go ahead and break it. And then select its opposite corner, which would be here. And we're going to stand right here and go copy, move over to here and do paste. And now we have a, a 5x4 display. So we're going to do it one more time. Paste. And now we have a 5x6 display. So what we're going to do is shave off that extra one, because we don't need it. Give ourselves a reference block to select. And once again, do set air. And there we go. We have a very lovely 5x5 five five condensed display that is the same display type that I used for my ASCII word processor. It's also the same display type that I used for my Prelude of the Chambered game, just on a much larger scale. So I hope that you, you learned a few things and uh, were, are able to make this yourself. Uh, and be able to apply it to whatever device you come up with that it works for. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I am always open to helping out whenever I can. Uh, I can clarify things or even make additional videos if necessary. I will be doing a live stream broadcast of the creation of the next generation of the Prelude of the Chamber, which is going to be a complete rebuild of the project as I've come up with a much better design. Uh, I'm, my live stream channel is linked in the description. Uh, I will be doing broadcasts on Fridays at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And of course those broadcasts will be archived in case you can't make it uh, while I'm live so that you can view them at any time. So that you can watch and see just how I create all of these amazing contraptions from scratch. and. Uh, you can see me wandering about and building things and breaking things and getting frustrated and grumbling and aha and eureka moments and all that fun stuff. So I look forward to interacting with you there. And uh, yeah, so until Friday, I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.